From San Jose, California, it's The Q. Covering Big Data Silicon Valley 2017. Hey, California, Silicon Valley at the heart of the big data world. This is theCUBE's coverage of Big Data Silicon Valley in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. Of course, we've been here for multiple years covering Hadoop world for now our eighth year. Now that's Strata Hadoop. And we do our own event, Big Data SV, in New York City and Silicon Valley, SV NYC. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, George Gilbert, analyst at Wikibon. Our next guest is Tendu Yogurtchur with SingSort, general manager of the Big Data. I got, did I get that right? Yes, you got it right, okay. always a pleasure I love your name, it's so hard for me to get, get, but I think I was close enough there. Welcome back. Thank you. Great to see you. You know, one of the things I'm excited about with SingSort is we've been following you guys, we talk to you guys every year, and it just seems to be that every year, more and more announcements happen. You guys are unstoppable. You're like the, what Amazon does, it's just, a, just more and more announcements, but the theme seems to be integration. Yes. Give us the latest update. You had an update, uh, you bought Trillium, you got a deal with Hortonworks, you got integrated with Spark, you got a big news here. What's the, what's the news here this year? Sure, thank you uh, for having me. And uh, yes, it's very exciting times at SyncSort, and I probably say that every time I appear because every time it's more exciting than the previous, uh, which is great. So we uh, bought Trillium Software, and Trillium Software has been leading data quality over a decade in many of the enterprises. And it's very complementary to our data integration, data management portfolio, uh, because uh, we are helping our uh, customers to access all of their uh, uh, enterprise data, not just the new f emerging sources in the con connected devices and mobile and uh, streaming, uh, and also leveraging uh, reference data, the high, uh, my mainframe legacy systems and the legacy mm -hmm. enterprise data warehouse. While we are doing that, accessing uh, data, data lake is now actually, in some cases, turning into data s uh, swamp. And that was a term Dave, Dave Valente uh, used a couple of years back in one of the crowd chats, uh, and it's becoming real. So data Real being the data swamps, are, I mean data lakes are turning into swamps swamp. because they're not being leveraged properly. Exactly, exactly, because it's r about also uh, having access to right data, and uh, data quality is very complementary because uh, 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 Trillium has uh, trusted right data served uh, to enterprise customers in the traditional environments, so now we are looking uh, uh, forward to bring that uh, enterprise trusted uh, data quality into Data Lake. And in terms of the data integration, data integration has been always uh, uh, very critical to any uh, organization. It's, it's even more critical now that the data is shifting gravity and the uh, amount of data organizations have. Uh, what we have been delivering in very large enterprise production environments uh, for the last three years is uh, we are hearing our competitors making announcements in those areas uh, very recently, which is a validation, because we are already uh, running in very large uh, production environments. We are uh, uh, offering uh, value by saying, create your applications for integrating your data, whether it's in the uh, cloud, originating in the cloud, or originating on the mainframes, whether it's on the legacy data warehouse, uh, you can deploy the same exact application without any recompilations, without any changes uh, on your standalone uh, uh, Windows, uh, Windows laptop or uh, in Hadoop MapReduce or Spark uh, in the cloud. So this design once and deploy anywhere is becoming more and more critical with data is uh, originating in many different uh, places and uh, cloud is definitely uh, one of them. And uh, uh, our data warehouse optimization solution uh, with Hortonworks and uh, at scale, it's a special package to accelerate this adoption. It's basically helping organizations to uh, uh, offload uh, uh, workloads from the existing uh, Teradata or Netiza data warehouse and uh, deploying in uh, Hadoop. With a, I, I, we provide a single button to automatically map the metadata, create the metadata in Hive or uh, on uh, Hadoop and uh, also uh, make the data accessible uh, in the new environment and at scale provide, uh, provides a fast BI on top of that. 
Wow, that's amazing. So I want to ask you a question because this is another theme. So I just did a tweet up uh, uh, just now while you're talking, saying, you know, the theme this year is cleaning up the data lakes yes. or data swamps, aka data lakes. Uh, the other theme is integration. So. Yes. Could you just lay out the, 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 your premise on how enterprises should be looking at integration now? Because it's the multi-vendor world, it's a multi-cloud world, yes. multi-data type and source yes. with metadata world. How do you advise cl customers that have the plethora of, of, of action yes. coming at them? IOT, you got cloud, you got big data, I got Hadoop here, I got Spark over here. What's the integration formula? So, first thing is uh, identify what your uh, business use case is. What's your business uh, challenge? What's your business goals and the challenge? Because that should be the real driver. Uh, we see in some organizations, they start with the intention, we would like to create a data lake without having that very uh, clear understanding. What is it that I'm trying to serve uh, with this data lake? And data as a service, uh, data uh, as a service is uh, really becoming a team across multiple organizations, whether it's on, on the enterprise side or uh, on the um, uh, 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 some of the kind of online uh, retail uh, uh, organizations, uh, for example. And uh, as part of that data as a service, organizations really need to adopt tools that are going to enable them to take advantage of the technology stack. The technology stack is evolving very rapidly. The skill sets are rare, and skill sets are rare because you need to be kind of making the judgments, am I hiring uh, PhD students who can uh, program uh, Scala in the most optimized way, or uh, should I hire uh, uh, Java uh, developers, or should I hire Python developers? So, uh, and the names of the tools in the stack, uh, Spark 1 versus Spark 2 APIs change. It's really evolving very it's rapidly. It's hard to find Scala yes. developers. I mean, you go outside Silicon Valley. Exactly. So you need to be, uh, as an organization, our uh, advice is that you, you really need to uh, uh, find tools that are going to fit those business use cases and uh, provide a single software environment that data integration might be happening on-premise now with uh, some of the uh, legacy enterprise data warehouse, and it might happen uh, in a hybrid on-premise and uh, cloud environment in the near future, and perhaps uh, completely at the in the cloud. So uh, standard tool, tools that have some standard software behind it, yes. so you don't get stuck in the personnel hiring problem of exactly. some unique domain expertise that's hard to hire. Yes, skill set is one problem. The second problem is the fact that uh, uh, the applications need to be uh, recompiled because the stack is evolving and the APIs are not compatible with the previous uh, version. So that's a maintenance cost also uh, to yeah. keep up with the th things, to be able to catch up with the new v versions of the stack. Uh, that's another area that uh, uh, tools really help because you want to be able to develop the same application and deploy it anywhere in any compute platform. So Tendu, if I hear you properly, what you're saying is integration sounds great on paper, it's important, but there's some hidden cost there. Yes. And that is the skill set and then there's the stack yes. recompiling and yes. making sure. And okay, that's awesome. Help with that. So take a step back and zoom out and talk about uh, SyncSort's positioning because you guys have been changing with the stacks as well, and you guys yes. have been doing very well, with, obviously with the, uh, with the uh, announcements, you've yes. been just coming uh, on the market all the time. What is the current value proposition for SyncSort today? The current value proposition is really we help organizations uh, to uh, create the next generation modern data architecture by accessing and liberating all enterprise data and uh, delivering that data at the right time uh, and uh, the right quality data. That's our, uh, it's liberate, integrate uh, with integrity. So that's our value proposition. Yeah. How would we do that? We provide that single software environment. You can have batch legacy data and uh, uh, streaming data yeah. sources uh, uh, integrated in the same exact uh, yeah. environment and it enables you to adapt the Spark 2 or Flink or whichever compute framework is going to happen. Yeah. That has been our value proposition and it is proven in many production deployments. Hey, what's interesting too is the way you guys have approached the market, you've locked down the legacy. Yes. So you have, you know, we've talked about the mainframe, but it's well beyond that now. You mm -hmm. guys have an understanding the legacy, so you kind of lock that down, protect it, and make it, I don't mean secure, it's security-wise, but you do that too, but making sure it works, because still data there. Yes. These legacy systems 
are really critical in the hybrid. A mainframe uh, uh, expertise and uh, heritage that we have uh, is uh, a critical part of our offering and uh, we will continue mm -hmm. to uh, focus on uh, uh, innovation on the mainframe side as well as on the distributed. One of the announcements that uh, we made since our uh, last conversation was bringing, we, we have partnership with uh, Compuware and uh, we now bring uh, more uh, data types about application uh, 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 failures, uh, uh, it's uh, abandoned uh, data to Splunk for operational intelligence. And uh, we will continue to also uh, support more delivery uh, 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 types. Uh, we have batch delivery, we have streaming delivery, and uh, now the replication into Hadoop has uh, been a challenge. So our focus is now the replication from DB2 on mainframe and uh, VSAM on mainframe to Hadoop environments. So, that's what, uh, we will continue to focus on mainframe because we have heritage there. And it's also part of uh, a big uh, enterprise uh, data lake. Uh, you cannot make sense of the customer data uh, that you are getting from mobile if you don't reference the critical data assets that are on the mainframe. And uh, uh, with the Trillium uh, acquisition, it's very exciting because now uh, we are at a kind of a pivot uh, point in the market. We can bring uh, that data validation, cleansing and matching superior capabilities uh, 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 we have uh, to the uh, big data environments. And uh, one of the things is So when you have a l and low latency, you can you is it you guys do the whole low latency thing too? You bring it in fast? Yes, we bring it. That, that's uh, our current value proposition. And as we are accessing this data and integrating as part of the data lake, uh, now we have capabilities with Trillium that we can profile that data, yeah. get statistics, and start using machine learning to automate the data stewards' uh, job. Data stewards are still spending 70% of their time trying to cleanse the data. Yeah, so if a lot of manual work labor there. Exactly. And if modeling too, by the way. The modeling and just the cleaning. Cleaning and modeling kind of go hand in hand. Exactly. If we can automate any of these steps to uh, derive the business rules uh, automatically and uh, provide the right data on the data lake, that would be very valuable. Uh, this is what we are hearing from our customers as well. You know, we've, we've heard probably five years about the data lake as the center of gravity of big data but we're hearing uh, at least a bifurcation and you know maybe more where now we want to take that data and apply it operationalize it um, in making decisions with machine learning and you know predictive mm -hmm. analytics but at the same time we're trying to square this strange circle of data the data lake where you didn't say up front what you wanted it to look like but now we want ever richer metadata to make sense out of it you know, a layer that, that you're putting on it, mm -hmm. the data prep layer, and others are trying to put different, you know, uh, metadata on top of it. Um, what do you see that metadata l layer looking like over the next three to five years? So the governance is a very uh, uh, key uh, uh, topic and uh, for sure organizations who are ahead of the game uh, in the big data and who already established that data lake, data governance and uh, even analytics governance becomes uh, important. So what we are delivering here uh, with the Trillium, we will have generally available uh, by end of uh, Q1. Uh, we are basically uh, bringing business rules to the data. So instead of bringing data to business rules, we are taking the business rules and deploying uh, them uh, where the data uh, exists. So that that will be a uh, key because of the data gravity you mentioned. Because the data might be uh, in the Hadoop environment, data might be uh, in a, a legacy enterprise uh, data warehouse, and it might be uh, originating in the cloud, and you don't want to move the data to the business rules. You want to move the business rules to where the data exists. Cloud uh, is an uh, area that we see more and more of our customers are moving forward. Uh, the two main use cases around uh, integration is one, because the data is originating in cloud, and the second one is archiving data to cloud. And uh, we, are, uh, we announced actually tighter integration with Cloudera Director uh, earlier this week for this event. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, that uh, we have been in uh, cloud deployments uh, and we are uh, we have actually an offering in Elastic MapReduce already and on EC2 for a couple of years now uh, and also on the Google Cloud storage uh, but this announcement is uh, primarily making deployments even easier by uh, uh, leveraging cloud directors yeah. elasticity for increasing and reducing uh, uh, the deployment now our customers will also take advantage of integration jobs uh, from that elasticity Tendu, it's great to have you on theCUBE because you have an engineering mind, but you're also now the general manager of the business and your business is changing. You're in the center of the action, so I want to get your expertise and insight into um, enterprise readiness concept. And we mm -hmm. saw last week at Google Cloud uh, 2017, the you know Google going down the path of being you know enterprise ready or taking steps. I don't think they're fully ready, but they're certainly serious about the cloud and the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And that's clear from Diane Green, who, who knows the enterprise. Um, and it, it, it sparked the conversation last week around what does enterprise readiness mean for cloud players? Because there's so many details in between the, li in between the lines, if you will, of what products are. Mm -hmm. That integration, certification, SLAs. What's your take on the notion of cloud readiness? You know, vis-a-vis -vis Google and others that, that are, are, are bringing cloud compute, a lot of resources, with an IOT market that's now booming, big data evolving very, very fast, a lot of real time, a lot of analytics, a lot of innovation happening. Uh, what's the enterprise uh, picture look like and from a readiness standpoint, how do these guys get ready? So uh, from a big picture, uh, for enterprise, uh, there are a couple of things uh, that don't, these cannot be afterthought. Security, uh, uh, metadata lineage as part of data governance, and uh, being able to uh, have flexibility in the architecture that uh, they will not be kind of recreating the jobs that they might have already deployed in the on-premise uh, environments, right? To be able to have the same application uh, running from on-premise to on uh, cloud will be critical because it gives flexibility for adoption in the enterprise. Uh, en enterprise uh, uh, may have some uh, map reduce jobs running on premise uh, with the Spark jobs on cloud because uh, they are really uh, doing some predictive analytics, graph uh, uh, analytics on, on those. They want to be able to kind of uh, uh, have that flexibility of architecture uh, where we hear uh, this concept of a hybrid environment. And you don't want to be kind of deploying a completely different product uh, in the cloud and uh, redo your jobs. That flexibility of uh, architecture, flexibility so having in different adoption. code bases in the cloud versus on-prem requires two jobs to be, do the two same thing. Two jobs for maintaining, two jobs for standardizing, uh, and uh, two uh, s uh, different skill sets of people potentially. So you uh, security governance and uh, uh, being able to access easily and uh, have uh, applications uh, move in between environments will be uh, very critical. So seamless integration between seamless. clouds and on-prem first, and then potentially multi-cloud. Yes. So that's and table stakes in your mind. They are absolutely table stakes. And uh, a lot of uh, vendors are uh, trying to focus on that. Uh, definitely Hadoop vendors are also focusing on that. And also the um, w one of the things like when people talk about uh, governance, the requirements are changing. We have been talking about single view and customer 360 for a while now, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, do we have it right yet? Uh, the enrichment is becoming a uh, key. Uh, with Trillium, we made a recent announcement, uh, precise enriching. Uh, it's not just the address that you want to deliver and make sure that the address uh, should be correct. It's also the email address and the phone number. Is it mobile number? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, ho uh, landline? Uh, it's enriched data sets that we have to be really dealing and uh, there's a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. and we are really excited because data quality, discovery and yeah. uh, 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 integration are uh, coming together uh, and uh, we have a good... Uh, well, Tendu, thank you for joining us and congratulations on, you know, seeing sort broadens their scope to being a modern data platform solution provider for companies. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks thank you for, for coming having me. This is theCUBE here, thank live in Silicon Valley in San Jose. I'm John Furrier with George Gilbert. You're watching our coverage of Big Data, Silicon Valley in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube. We'll be right back with more live coverage. We've got two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage with experts and pros talking about big data, the transformations here inside The Cube. We'll be right back. Uh -huh.